Hi everybody, I know this video is a bit late because by the time this goes live, it's gonna have been like a week and a half to two weeks since some of the footage that I'm going to be showing aired. But honestly, watching the equestrian sports in the Olympics has been really mentally taxing. It's been super disappointing. There has been some really nice, beautiful rides, but as a whole, I am so disappointed in the lack of welfare protections for horses at the Olympics, especially since the FEI and the IOC were well aware of the pressure that is on horse sports to improve welfare and I honestly thought that they would be doing a better job. Unfortunately that wasn't the case and there is a lot of concerning things that were ongoing pertaining to horse welfare at the Olympics so I'm just gonna do the low lights which is basically the highlights of the worst of the worst and then I'll show a couple of the nicer rides that I saw as well but Despite people fixating on negativity and thinking that accountability and discussing the problems in the horse industry is too negative, I don't want to focus on the positives when the positives that I did see should be the rule rather than the exception to the rule because there were not enough positive performances. I want the horse industry to move to a point where we see way more positive performances that are indicative of good horse welfare and that's currently not happening. So until it does, I want to talk about some of the things that are being enabled and rewarded at the pinnacle of the sport and why we should no longer be allowing this to happen. I'm going to do a brief overview of each discipline in the Olympics, but I'm going to primarily focus on dressage because that's where we got to see the most footage of the horses being ridden. It was the longest. There was a few things in eventing that I'm going to go over too, but with eventing, I'm going to kind of focus on cross country mostly so as to not be redundant because there's a lot of crossover between problems seen in eventing cross country and show jumping. And then the problems that I would see in eventing dressage are not dissimilar from Grand Prix dressage. Grand Prix dressage just takes them to a far more extreme level in my opinion. So firstly with eventing, one of the biggest concerns that I had is some of the photos that the FEI chose to put on their page to advertise the Olympics and be like, look at how great these athletes are, were really problematic. One in particular that I noticed was a photo that they posted of a rider with a very poorly fitted Kinetin noseband that was sitting so low on the horse's nose that it would be right at the tip of the very very fragile portion of the nasal bone on the skull which can be easily broken when too much pressure is applied and it's also where all of the soft tissues are so it was a huge problem and it was a tack malfunction that they not only did not look at during the horse's cross-country run but they also took a video still from that run to post to their story to kind of be like yay go olympics and that is a problem because it just shows a huge lack of awareness for horse welfare and the importance of correctly fitted tack, especially on cross country where horses are running and having to do this huge cardio output and not being able to breathe properly is a pretty huge problem. Also, ironically, this horse had a flare nasal strip on, which is supposed to open the airways for breathing. Uh, but when you have a noseband that is literally flattening the airways because of its placement, doesn't really work the same way. So that was one of the big concerns that I saw from cross country and I was really disappointed by the FEI using that on their story to basically be like, yay, go Olympics. Here's some of the athletes we're watching. It was just in really poor taste and really tone deaf. Cross country overall went better than Tokyo, in my opinion. There weren't major accidents that resulted in deaths of horses or severe injuries because one horse did get euthanized uh, after the cross country at the Tokyo Olympics. There was a fall and there were some horses who were looking very uncomfortable during their cross country test, like running through the bridle with gaping mouths and whatnot and it just wasn't the nicest look uh, because in my opinion too like I get that it's a high level sport these are really fit animals and all the excuses people like to use but we need to start looking at like where do we draw the line if the only way to get a horse to a certain level of competition is by putting them in discomfort and the only way to control them at that level is by using really aversive and painful equipment then maybe we need to reconsider how challenging that aspect of the competition is so Overall, eventing is not what drew the greatest concern to me at the Olympics. I think that the Grand Prix dressage actually painted the horse world in the worst light at this Olympics. That is a personal opinion. I'm not saying it's law, 
But if we look at studies that are referencing elite sport horses, dressage horses do tend to have a pattern where they're showing more conflict behaviors, which are stress behaviors. So there is some merit to suggesting that dressage horses are showing more stress behaviors. With that said, they're usually in the arena for longer and they have to be in more restrictive postures. They don't have the same amount of freedom to show certain behaviors and be themselves as horses do in show jumping, for example. But with that said, what I noticed in Grand Prix dressage is that there was a clear trend to reward riders who are riding behind the vertical for a large portion of their tests. And there was also where we would notice certain big name riders getting really inflated marks because they would have tests that seemed to be less harmonious and were definitely ridden a lot more hyperflex than other riders, but they were getting way higher marks. One rider in particular that bothered me the most was on the USA team, and her name is Adrienne Lyle, and she rode her test in hyperflexion for the vast majority of it. I've had people commenting on my posts a lot or on my videos and be like, it's just a moment in time. This was not just a moment in time. If you have not watched this test, please go watch some of the Olympic replays. I am not kidding when I say that these photos are re representative of what the entire test basically was. It was the most hyperflex test I have ever witnessed watching the score continue to climb live. Uh, especially at the Olympics. And I was just astounded by the score that they gave her because it was so blatantly clear. And something to note with dressage is that there's seven judges on all different parts of the arena that were watching this. So the fact that seven judges gave this person a score of 72.5 for a test that was ridden extremely hyperflexed and tense, I think speaks for a lot for the direction that modern dressage is headed and the lack of enforcement from the FEI to make sure that their judges are actually rewarding ethical riding because in some of these tests, you could literally hear the horses gasping for air as they went past the microphones. And you could also hear horses teeth grinding. The other American horse who was eliminated because it had a blood on its fetlock from grabbing itself during the test, it was teeth grinding the entire test before that and it was scoring marks of like 73% on average. So if it weren't for the blood, it probably would have gotten a relatively decent score but it was teeth grinding so loudly past all of the cameras that you could like hear the teeth grinding very clearly and teeth grinding is a sign of stress for those who aren't aware anyways the top scorers as a general rule in grand prix dressage were riding very behind the vertical for a generous portion of the test some worse than others uh, one of the tests that was one of the top scorers that I really liked was by Becky Moody. I'm not going to endorse any of her training methods or her as an athlete overall because I don't know how she trains her horse behind the scenes, but it was a much more harmonious test and a lot nicer to watch than many of the other tests. There was also a Brazilian rider, and I'm not sure how to pronounce his first name, but his last name was Marcari Oliva, and he had a really nice harmonious test which was ridden on or ahead of the vertical for most of it. And the horse only scored a 70% compared to Adrian Lyle's 72.5%. So my concern with what they were scoring high in Grand Prix dressage is even if there's some nice tests that were getting higher scores, a majority of them showed a lot of tension and a lot of the horses were ridden quite behind the vertical for a good portion of the test. And in a day and age where people are commenting on the concerns relating to hyperflexion in the dressage ring, the Olympics is a portion of the like of media coverage that the FEI could have been cracking down on this type of stuff to show that they're actually making changes. And the judging and the scoring was not reflective of that. So it was really, really disappointing. There was a lot of really stressed horses who were showing lots of conflict behaviors and were being ridden very hyperflexed. And while I cannot ride a Grand Prix dressage test, I am a welfare professional. I study horse behavior for a living. I have my certificate of equine sciences through one of the best equine sciences universities in North America. So I would like to say that I know what I'm talking about and I am more educated to speak on this portion of horse care than the riders at the Olympics are. They can speak on how they would ride through a test better than I can, but they can't really speak on the ethics of that as a behavior professional in the same way I can. So I'm not coming into this discussion with the standpoint of being like, I am the most knowledgeable person for performing at this level and actually riding it and putting it into practice, but I'm looking at it from an ethical standpoint. And if it is not possible to do these things, 
in a more ethical manner, then we need to reconsider why we are conducting sports in this manner and why we're not making changes so that they can be more ethical. So dressage overall was quite disappointing. Uh, and it was just a really big slap in the face from the FBI basically giving everyone the middle finger and being like, we don't care about any of the concerns people have been voicing for years. And now we're going to flaunt our lack of care for that on international television and reward the very things that people have been expressing concern about for years now. So where I stand now is that I think the FEI is virtue signaling with a lot of the stuff that they say pertaining to horse welfare. They actually gave a yellow card to a Brazilian event rider um, during the warm up day because he was captured riding in hyperflexion and the breeder of the horse actually posted photos of that. And they didn't do anything until PETA wrote a formal complaint and then they gave him a yellow card, which is a warning. So he got carded for two or three photos that were posted to social media. And then they proceeded to watch Adrienne Lyle ride how she did in her dressage test and not just not card her or warn her or do anything about it in the moment, but reward her for it to the tune of 72.5%. Can we not look at how ridiculous that is? It's performative advocacy. They throw under the bus riders that aren't as big of a name and as well known or from as prevalent countries in terms of who's winning and pulling the most medals. And there also might even be like a racial component to that, that they don't want to throw their North American Western country white riders under the bus, but they'll do it to people who are people of color from countries that aren't being represented on the podium to the same extent in the same way as Germany, USA, Netherlands, Denmark, etc. So that was really disappointing to watch and it seemed very performative for them to card someone for something that they then went on to award in competition. Admittedly, I'm still catching up on Olympic coverage, so I'm going to have more videos that will come out late, but it's just been really hard to watch, especially for dressage because it was literally like six hours of watch time to catch up with the day's coverage for dressage. It was a lot of watching, so I'm still catching up for like the finals. Uh, but with that said, from what I saw, it was very disappointing. Uh, recently, there's a photo that came out of Isabel Worth and her horse, Wendy, who, when I was watching their test, I was actually pleasantly surprised that she rode her quite in an open frame compared to what I'd seen before, because Isabel Worth is like a pretty well-known hyperflexion trainer that she's used it openly in clinics and there's lots of training videos and show videos of her doing just that but anyways despite her tests looking better than what they usually do when it comes to hyperflexion one of the professional photographers from the olympics captured a photo of wendy with a very very blue tongue so her tongue was getting the circulation cut off to the point where it turned blue which is indicative of there being way too much contact on the reins that are then pulling and and basically suffocating the tongue from having proper blood flow. So that was also really concerning from a welfare standpoint. Uh, people are reporting that to the FEI, they're putting in concerns for their welfare panel, but nothing has happened yet. So we'll see where that goes. But honestly, overall, like I don't think this Olympics is looking really good for horse sports. It makes all horse people look bad. And if we want to continue to see equestrian sports in the Olympics, which after this Olympics, I honestly, if this is what it's gonna be like, I don't wanna see equestrian sports at the Olympics. I wanna see them at the Olympics if it's actually representative of ethical riding and horsemanship, but that's not what I saw at this Olympics. But we're digging ourselves a pretty big grave to have this sport thrown out at the Olympics at minimum, but also canceled altogether because it just looks bad on everyone. And what's worse is that there's a lot of people who are willing to defend just about anything, so long as the person doing the bad things is an upper level rider, they'll defend just about anything. And that just continues to make us look bad. It makes it look like we don't care and like we value status and prestige over horse welfare. And that the only opinions that people value are those from people competing at the upper levels, but then people don't care about the science showing us all of the welfare concerns that are occurring with horses at the upper levels. Lastly, I'm going to briefly just talk about show jumping, which is like basically same old, same old when it comes to show jumping, that there's some bidding setups that are really harsh, uh, some handsy riders, some horses with gaping mouths, and 
just all in all not very fluid harmonious rides for everyone there was some rides that were absolutely beautiful i thought like overall that i was like really pleasantly surprised to see like gilles thomas from belgium had a really nice ride that i found pleasant to watch and his horse is going around in what looked like a simple uh loose ring snaffle and that was really lovely there was some horses who were bitless but what i noticed is the horses who were bitless were all wearing uh mechanical hackmores and all of them were fitted a bit too low with some lower than others. Unfortunately, Julien Effiard's Hackamore, at least on the first day of show jumping, was fitted too low. From photos that I saw of the days after that, it looked like that he had bumped it up. But I did do, uh, I did collect some data for the show jumping horses and I'm gonna share just about the equipment being used and you can do with that what you will. It's not a statement of blame against any specific riders, just the trends that I saw in terms of the equipment used in the show jumping ring. Okay, so of 58 starters, this is the equipment that I saw used. The most popular bit setup was the Pelham or Swales bit with a rain converter. One rider rode with just one rain on the shank part of the Pelham, no converter. So there's 17 horses in a Pelham with a converter, one horse in a Pelham with one rain. Horses with Pelham with two reins was seven horses. Total horses in Pelhams was 25 horses. Next bit setup was hack a bit with converter or one rein, which was seven horses. Hack a bit with two reins, one horse. There was four horses in hack and more bitless bridles. In snaffles, 16 horses. Now that doesn't take into account what the mouthpiece of the snaffle might be because I couldn't tell on the feed. Uh, in a gag with one rein, there was five horses. In a gag with two reins, there was one horse. There was also two horses in Kimberwicks. So there was a total of 38 horses who were ridden in some type of leverage bit. The vast majority of the starters rode in a martingale, but three horses used no martingale. So 55 horses total in a running martingale. For nosebands, the most commonly used noseband by far was the flash noseband. 22 horses were ridden in a flash noseband. Only six horses were ridden in a regular cavasson noseband. Three horses went in rope nosebands. Eight horses in drop nosebands. Four horses in double nosebands. Four horses in figure eight nosebands. Seven horses in hackabit combo nosebands. Four horses in mechanical hackamores. No horses competed without a noseband. So what I took away from this is that a lot of the riders, even at the Olympic levels, when they're riding in a Pelham bit or a gag bit or a hack a bit or a bit that in theory should be ridden in with two reins to have the utmost use of the snaffle and the curve action and be able to separate those two actions, most people opted not to ride with two reins. And these are the best of the best riders in the world. So I found that quite interesting. And restrictive nosebands were also very popular, which I also found interesting. With that said, there was a few horses who I thought had very nice rides, which I already mentioned one of them. The other one that I thought had a pretty nice ride was Wilm Vermeer, which is a German rider, and he was one of the riders that was riding in a mechanical hackamore. With that said, a mechanical hackamore is still a harsher bitless option, so it'd be nice to see people using softer bitless bridles because bitless isn't always better. But overall, show jumpers had a tendency to use aversive equipment and pair leverage bits with restrictive nosebands and martingales and also with one rein, which makes the whole combination much more severe. But as a general rule, like I found that a lot of the show jumping horses went around showing less conflict signals than the dressage horses did. But with that said, they're also in the arena for a shorter period of time. So that's kind of my lowdown on the Olympics thus far. I will update as I start to catch up on more of the footage. Overall, I'm quite disappointed. We haven't even gotten around to the pentathlon equestrian portion. This is the last Olympics that equestrian show jumping will appear in the pentathlon because it's gotten removed, but it has to complete this Olympic cycle. So the pentathlon was horrendous at Tokyo. It drew a lot of attention to equestrian sports and caused so much uproar that it resulted in the pentathlon portion getting removed, or sorry, the equestrian portion getting removed from the pentathlon. So what I'm interested to see is how many people who are vehemently defending Olympic level equestrian riders will have a go at pentathlon riders who are less experienced but are doing a lot of the same things that people are complaining about with 
Olympians in equestrian sports. Because in my opinion, I think that people at the pinnacle of the sport who have dedicated their entire life specifically to equestrian sports should be held to a higher standard than pentathlon athletes who are essentially just amateur riders who are only doing it as like a small portion of their overall sport for the Olympics. It doesn't justify how the horse experiences the wrongs that they commit, but it is a little bit different than a lifelong equestrian who's dedicating their entire focus to their singular equestrian sport for the Olympics. And I find that people, when the rider has no big name behind it, have an easier time criticizing them for things that they choose not to see when it's their favorite rider doing it. So keep an eye out for that. What I would also encourage people to do is that accountability is not the same thing as just being negative. I don't really see a reason to be positive about horse sports right now when there's so much rampant mistreatment of horses that's being either ignored or blatantly rewarded at the Olympics. This is like the pinnacle of equestrian sports. So if they are going to crack down on poor welfare and horses anywhere, it should be at the Olympics and that's not happening. So until there actually starts to be a real concerted effort on the part of the FEI and organizations like it to protect horse welfare using evidence-based research, I am going to continue to be negative by speaking the truth. And if the truth happens to be portrayed in a negative light because that's what's happening, then rather than complaining at people like myself, why don't people go to the organizations that are allowing this to continue? Because ultimately, what is going to end our sport is our apathy towards horse welfare and all of the big players in equestrian sports and all of the organizations in equestrian sports that enable poor welfare and horses by not enforcing better welfare practices. That's gonna be what is our undoing. And if we continue to ignore the elephant in the room, it's just gonna get bigger. And the more horse people showcase to the world that we care more about the feelings of Olympic level riders than we do about the horses who never asked to be there and don't get any real say, all we're doing is sealing the nails in our coffin by showing the entire world that we do not care about the horse's feelings and that we care more about the feelings of the riders who could still do what they're doing, but do so in a more ethical way by changing practices. And it might be a little bit inconvenient for them, but what is a little inconvenience in comparison to like improving the horse's lives tenfold? So I'm disappointed. I'm going to keep complaining. I don't really care if people think that I'm being whiny and annoying or an armchair trainer because if it's people in armchairs, that's what it takes to change the horse world. It just says a lot about how little the people within that world who are actively competing actually care about the welfare of horses. If it's the guys in the armchairs that have to come forward and basically white knight to help horses get better care. Because honestly, like the sport shouldn't be happening if it has to come at the mass expense of horse welfare, full stop. There's there's no way around it. So anyways, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If there's anything in specific that you want me to cover or you have any videos or photos that you think are relevant for journalistic purposes that you want me to share, please use the email in the description. Check out all of my other pages, all the support that I'm given online by way of my shop, my Patreon, my webinars, watching and sharing my YouTube videos, etc. All of that stuff allows me to continue doing what I'm doing. And in order to get access to some of the Olympic photos that I'm going to be using for future reporting purposes, it costs money because I have to buy the rights to it. So anything helps. All of your views help. All the comments help. And I really appreciate it. It allows me to continue doing what I'm doing. And I really do hope that we'll see some positive changes coming to horse sports soon, even if it means that we have to basically back the FEI against a wall to have it happen so let me know your thoughts if you want to follow along more active coverage follow my facebook page milestone equestrian i'm doing most of my posts there to actively cover the olympics because it's a lot easier than filming and editing videos and i'm moving right now and i have a lot of stuff going on so it's just been a really hectic summer but check that out for more regular reporting and thank you again for all of your support let me know your thoughts if you've been watching the olympics um i'm really interested to hear what other people think so thanks everyone have a good day